the Joe Rogan experience. There's one city in Pakistan. Is it Karachi? What is that city? Why can't I remember the name? That, uh, is that it? It's, that was one of the cities that um, uh, Shane Smith from Vice was saying was one of the most terrifying places on earth. Oh, yeah. Because the, the, the sheer cheapness of murder, mm -hmm. like how, how cheap it is to get someone murdered over oh, there. Oh, really? And how much murder and crime goes on over there. Oh, God. Just a totally different metric yeah. for how you view the world. Totally different perception of what life is worth and what life is like. Yeah. And what kind of violence you have to deal with on a daily oh, basis. Oh, God. I know. There's a lot of very dark places. That's why I don't like to travel. You don't like to travel at all? <laughs> I do like to travel, but I don't. I'm starting to cross off a bunch of places. <laughs> <laughs> That's your sketch? Yeah. You yeah. know, between getting parasites that make you have to poop in a bag and send to your doctor or ending up in like real violent places that don't yeah. have the same kind of uh, rules that we do, it's, you know. My friend Justin Wren, who runs uh, Fight for the Forgotten Charity. He, I was he, just wearing his shirt at the beach yesterday. Oh, were you? That's yep. awesome. Best guy ever. Yeah. He has a new intestinal parasite that's draining him. He doesn't know what the fuck no. it is. Yeah. Yeah, he's got something that he caught when he was over there. Oh, no. And that's what I'm afraid of. He's really sick. Is he really? Yeah, he's really is sick. Is he going to be okay? I don't know. They're going to have to, um, hopefully. Identify gonna, it. Gonna, yeah, they have to figure out what it is. Figure out how he got it. It's, figure out what's going on. It's no joke. What happened in the Dominican Republic? Didn't they... People died because they were drinking from the mini bar. Did you hear that story? Yes. Yes. There's, yeah, there's yes. a lot of sketch. Yeah. They were saying that people were putting stuff in the mini bar that wasn't actually alcohol. Yeah. The, the story that I had heard was that they would put cheap substitutes for whatever the alcohol was supposed to be so that people would uh, pay for it and then, you know, they would steal the actual liquor oh, and God. replace it with something else and then people would drink it. It was like poisonous. And they were dying. Yeah. People really died. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. I hope he's okay. I don't okay. know what the actual story was, but somebody else described it saying like, the one thing is you concentrate on statistics. And I, I don't know if this is true. Mm -hmm. We should find out. But that if you concentrate on statistics, then it seems like a lot of people die in the Dominican Republic when they were over there. But the reality is that it's just right. the way we're looking at it because we've chosen to start focusing on people who die over there. But in fact, it's like commensurate with people that die over here when they're on vacation. Right. But... It is we, like, only a certain number go to that resort. <laughs> you know what I mean? In it was a year. more than one resort, I believe. It was? Yeah, I think so. Oy. Well, a lot of people go to the Dominican Republic. Not now, but a lot of people were I going was there to last year. Were you? Yeah. So would you go back after all this? No. First place. of all, I saw a story about a couple that went there and got hookworm in their feet. Oh, you could definitely From the get beach. That. that, I was already like, maybe I'm not going back. And now that you can't even drink from the mini bar, I'm like, you know what? There's nice places in Laguna Beach. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Laguna. Did you know that Hookworm is responsible? Pismo for, Beach. Hookworm is responsible for the um, the stereotype of the Southern dummy. No. Yeah. What do you mean? People walking around the South barefoot were getting hookworm and mass, and hookworm has a detrimental effect on your ability to think. Oh, yeah! So it literally like the, compromises your mental ability. It makes you dumber. So like the trope of mm -hmm. like a hillbilly walking. Exactly. In. Really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, weird. Yep. Yep. Uh, did I find out? Did we find out about that from Peter Hotez? Is that who told us that? That Might is have weird. Been how a worm gave the South a bad name. Oh my God! Yeah. Hookworms once sapped the American South of its health, and few realize that they continue to afflict millions. Jeez. Yeah. Ugh, he looks so creepy. It fucks with the way you think. Ugh. It makes you tired. It gives you fatigue. Yeah. In this a, podcast a, has turned very exhaustion. dark. Listen to this. Weeks later, victims succumb to an insatiable exhaustion and impenetrable haziness of the mind that some called stupidity. Adults neglected their fields and children grew pale and listless. Victims developed grossly distended bellies and angel wings, emaciated shoulder blades, accentuated by hunching. All gazed out dully from sunken sockets with a telltale fisheye stare. That is the stereotype of people from the South. And we just Jeez. always thought that they're just living in hot weather and they're just stupid. God. But what it really was... Was worms. Was fucking hookworm. Ew. Isn't that amazing? This podcast started off. We were having Look at how fun. They we it. were talking about Look at judo. How they the culprit behind the germ of laziness, as the South's affliction was sometimes called, was 
Nicator Americanus, the American murderer, better known as the hookworm. It's called the American murderer. Are they still out there? Millions of those blood-sucking parasites lived fed, yeah, for sure, and died within the guts of up to 40% of the population, stretching from southeastern Texas to West Virginia. Can you imagine 40%? of the population of the South in these places from Texas to West Virginia was infected. 40% of the population with a fucking worm that makes you dumb. I'm never lazy. going anywhere ever again. Isn't that incredible? That's, this, that's insane. But that's what the stereotype came from. Wow. How wild. Fucking crazy. That's insane. You know, how many people are getting <sighs> right now getting Lyme disease? And Lyme disease, although yeah. it doesn't make you lazy, it wrecks your health. Wrecks you. your health. For years. Yep. For that, years. That shit is happening right now on the East Coast. It's all, it's all over the East Coast. My kids were back there working on a farm over the over the summer, and my daughter had a tick on her. We freaked out. Mm, should freak out. Yeah. You got to get it off within okay. before 24 hours. Yeah. And, you know, but you also, if you do get infected, you have to get on antibiotics really quickly. Super fast. There's a woman who wrote a book about um, Lyme disease possibly being a, a military biological weapon that accidentally was released. Really? Yeah. Apparently, this is a, a popular thought, that there's something about Lyme disease that Lyme disease doesn't necessarily make sense, how quickly it came from this one area, like this Lyme, Connecticut mm -hmm. area and how uh, rapidly it spread, oh. and how devastating its impact was. And there is, apparently, there has been some research that's been, well, not some, quite a bit of research is done on various biological weapons and various distribution methods. And one of the thoughts of a lot of these distribution methods is uh, infecting bugs. Oh. Infecting bugs with some designer disease and then infecting the population. Like if you release the bugs on this area that you wanted to attack, like at a certain point in time, uh -huh. and you infected giant chunks of the population, right. then you would be able to go back there 10 years later and everybody would be fucked. Wow. Yeah, but this, this is something that biological diseases, whether it's anthrax, like things along those lines. Yeah, terrifying. But they've made those yeah. forever. You know, they've, they've had that and people have been aware of that forever. Yeah. But the idea of it being something that's in a bug and that can infect you. Jeez Louise. That's terrifying. Kind of yeah. Are you, you trying to make it? That? Are you trying to make it that I don't go out of my out. house? I'm trying to freak you out, bro. <laughs> no, it's weird that it's, I mean, the, we, the, I don't remember being around when we were it kids was not on around. the East Coast. It was not around. And I think it took a while for anybody to figure out what the fuck it was. Um, How about the new mosquitoes that we have? Yes. Well, there's also... We never had these mosquitoes before. There's a recent case of a horrible disease breaking out in the East Coast. I think somewhere in Massachusetts, there is some uh, horrible mosquito-borne disease. What, did that, what does that uh, thing say about the ticks, about Lyme disease? What is the book? It's called Bitten. Yes, that's it. Bitten? Chris Newby, K with K-R-I-S, Chris. Is that a man or a woman? It's a woman. But yeah, she discovered yeah. circumstantial evidence linking the outbreak of Lyme disease in the 1960s to U.S. military. Some people say this is bullshit, but uh, some people say it's just conspiracy theory. Who's some people? Put up the article so we can see it. It's the middle of the. Okay, give me a spread it out so I can see it. Scroll down. Okay, the DoD. Go back up. Stop. The DoD takes extreme care of all of its research programs to ensure the protection of our personnel and the community. What is that? When Smith announced his amendment, okay, this is this is too much there. It says, uh, there's just too much evidence for a reasonable man or woman to just turn the page and say, put on your tinfoil hat, this is just a conspiracy theory, Smith said. And yet people with credentials will say that, which begs the question, why would they even say that? Chris Newby wrote the book Bitten, said she discovered circumstantial evidence linking the outbreak of Lyme disease in the 1960s, that's what you said, from the U.S. military. As proof, Newby cites an interview that she had, stop right there, with Will Bergdofer, the American scientist who discovered what causes Lyme disease, who told her shortly before his death that he had been instructed to keep his research and a possible cause for Lyme disease a secret. My hypothesis was, is, that the biological weapon they were trying to cover up, that Oh, my hypothesis is that was the biological weapon they were trying to cover up, said Newby, a science writer 
at the Stanford School of Medicine in California. I don't believe it. Hmm. Seems like a lot of malarkey. She said, I can't connect the dots right now. Mm -hmm. Says newbie who survived Lyme disease. My theory is that it was a genetically engineered rickettsia bacteria. But mm -hmm. as a journalist, I can't prove that. So what is she saying then? She's just pulling stuff so out. So she wrote a book. She wrote a book. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't buying it. But that's not to say. That, that does worry me more than anything. I think she's a hoser. I don't know her personally, but. If you had a guess. Probably. But I think that. You uh, bet your bread. <laughs> yeah. I would never give her my bread. <laughs> uh, that scares me more than anything, though. It's a plague. A plague yeah. of some sort. Sure. I always feel like we should be uh, keeping some medicine in the house. Plague medicine? Yeah. Like what kind? I don't know. Tetracycline? Is that good for plague? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck you is good take for something. plague? What the hell could be good for plague? Depends what the plague is. Really? If it's a flu, you, there's certain things you can take. If it's not, if it's crazy war bugs, probably nothing. But there's so many people, and it's so gross, and you can see how <laughs> <laughs> people just coughing in the airports without covering their mouths. That's going to happen. <laughs>